Now what will it be? Death or exile? Hi guys, this is your spoiler-free review of Wonder Woman 1984 for the film Exiles. Wonder Woman 1984 is directed by Patty Jenkins. It stars Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, Chris Pine as Christopher, Kristen Wiig as Barbara Minerva, aka Cheetah, and Pedro Pascal as Maxwell Lord. Now, the good things about this movie I really like the way it looks, the cinematography is quite good, and I mean that in terms of the texture and the quality of what you're looking at. The way it's color graded, the way that Patty Jenkins is able to shoot a scene, and it doesn't hurt that it has really good costumes and really good set design and has, you know, good visual effects as well. You can see that this is a big, expensive, sumptuous blockbuster. And the money is on the screen. Also, the actors did a really good job. Every single one of the main actors did a fine performance. They were magnetic and charismatic in their own different ways. Gal Gadot embodies Wonder Woman once again. She comes with you know, the strength, the grace, and the beauty as well. And she is fierce in the role. I think she even elevated her game as an actress. Uh, Steve Trevor, played by Chris Pine, amazing job, really good chemistry with uh, Gal Gadot, once again, very easy, breezy, charming, effervescent character, um, I think that Kristen Wiig did an amazing job as Barbara Minerva, you know, she transitions through three phases in the film, and she's able to portray each of them really, really well. She was someone I had questions about before coming in, and especially for the tone that they were going for, I think she did a really, really good job. Pedro Pascal has to be given <laughs> a lot of credit. He played a villain who was very complex, uh, has a lot of motivations, a lot going on, who goes through a very dramatic journey, and he did a great job portraying that. Unfortunately, that's where all the good stuff in this film and um, the film is actually a bad film. I really did not like it. I came in with an open mind. I came in expecting to be different from the first one, but it just took such a drastic turn from the first one that I am left very disappointed. The really bad things about it, the writing is very, very bad. I cannot state this enough. And I mean that in terms of how they take a lot of shortcuts to get where they're trying to go. They have a huge problem with the the an issue of Deus Ex Machina. And Deus Ex Machina uh, explains a person or a thing that appears in the story or is introduced into a situation suddenly or unexpectedly and provides an artificial and contrived solution to a story problem. And we could see that with like the lasso of truth. It, suddenly could do anything and everything that she needed to do it could broadcast all over the world she could swing from clouds she could swing from lightning it could give people visions it was just like a shortcut for just nonsense and was just very lazy story writing and this happened over and over again in a lot of other things we'll get more into it into in the spoiler review but this is just not good enough for this level of character um also, a lot of the monologuing, like the just like blabbing and talking too much instead of showing, you know, it's there's this thing in, in you know, show business say, you know, show don't tell. There were a lot of long, boring, cringy speeches talking about feelings and you know, with over dramatic, melodramatic music, and it was just really poorly done. Also, the tone that they went for was goofier than two left feet in big baller brand sneakers. It came off like Looney Tunes or Charlie Chaplin or Three Stooges. And then there was an over-reliance on nostalgia, as if Patty Jenkins wasn't confident in her own story that she has to rely on attachments people have to things in the past. 
to prop this up. Overall, I really did not like this film, and it ended up making me question the film as a whole. I started out with an open heart. I found myself beginning to give excuses and struggling more and more to love the film. It started out okay, to be sincere, but the more I watched it, the more I detested it. At the end, I thought that the credits would be the sweet mercy that I deserved after, you know, given two and a half hours of my life to this. But then they threw in an end credit scene that made me hate this even more. Wonder Woman 1984 is a blatant, shameless product. Patty Jenkins is a fine filmmaker, but she's a poor artist, and there is nuance between the two. She's not someone who, at least with this film, like who wants to make great art and tell a great story. She comes off as someone who wants to sell a product, using all the manipulative tricks and tactics and shortcuts that she can shamelessly and blatantly. There's no innovation here. It doesn't challenge the audience in new ways. It doesn't move the art forward. It doesn't move the subgenre forward or expand it or do something new and adventurous with it. It's just nostalgic, pandering, shortcuts. As a matter of fact, I feel that Wonder Woman 1984 aggressively holds back the art of filmmaking and the subgenre within which it exists. And so that's my review for Wonder Woman 1984. If you couldn't tell, I really did not like this, even though I really liked the first one, apart from the third act. Um, we'll have a more in-depth discussion of this film. I hope that you guys tune into it. It's going to be our spoiler talk, our spoiler chat, and there's going to be a panel of four people with actually probably four different... Uh, takes on it uh, a couple of us like it are okay with it and it's going to be a good discussion so thank you very much for listening to this i've been yours truly lupe you can find me on twitter at live love lupe you can find the film exiles on twitter as well at the film exiles and until next time stay exiled